My eye keeps going to the jacket. I love it, so I'm gonna try it on. You should. Go for it. <laughs> Hi friends, it's a beautiful day here in Toronto and I get to spend time with Beth nicholson Crago. Beth has quite the resume. She got her start in NYC working for big brands like Michael Kors and Derek Lamb. When she returned to Toronto, she joined Opel Handbags, quickly establishing it as a go-to for those in the know. Her latest chapter, Friends of Jenny, is an online women's wear boutique, but those are only the bullet points. Let's go fill in the blanks with Beth nicholson Crago. Here it is. The clothes. <laughs> Here it is. So this is your latest chapter. This is. is this is Friends of Jenny. So this is the latest spring summer collection that we have. Some of the brands, I just put a, a smattering of all the different collections that we carry at the moment. How many do you stock usually? Around 15 to 20. Oh, excellent. Yeah. How do you select them? Really, we are focused on trying to work with female-led brands, small independent labels uh, with a focus on sustainability where possible. And we like to have brands that are not as well known, um, mm -hmm. that we may be, if not the only person carrying it in Canada, one of the only people. So we're really bringing in these sort of unique, hard to find brands from all over the world, really, and bringing them to the Canadian customer. Like for instance, Rachel Comey, uh, there's not that many people in Canada really? that carry. I know. So we're so fortunate to have it. It's such a great brand, such a New York aesthetic. Yes. We just love everything that she does. And she really has developed more of a focus on sustainability, making some of her fabrications out of plastic bottles, you know, recycled, organic. So that's been really great. In terms of personal style, how do you build your outfit so you're most comfortable? I have the sort of baseline of color story that I love, and I think you can see it reflected <laughs> in my house. And just even what I have on, I kind of match my living room. It just, and that just happens. I love the color nude or blush or pink. I have a lot of pieces in that color. I love sort of neutrals and creams. I love to wear white in the winter. I love to do monochromatic kind of looks and I will sort of build from there. Yeah. So you've built this room much like your wardrobe and there's amazing layers and beautiful small pieces and details. I've got my eye on that vase. Well, this one is just this incredible piece of art. I feel mm -hmm. like it's, it also is one of a kind because the process this artist uses to make them, it often falls apart. So when you actually get one that works, it's like a miracle. And so I feel like it's this really beautiful, special piece. I got this one actually for my husband because I wanted him to keep his stuff nice. <laughs> Add a little aesthetic to where he puts his wallet, you know? So that's what that's about. And then this guy, actually Danielle gave to me as a housewarming gift. So Excellent. she is in tune with my love of pink. Yes. <laughs> so this was like the perfect little accent to go in the room, so. And we're gonna meet Danielle later. And she is like the queen of the perfect shelfie and shelf styling. She is. I hate to use the word on trend, but it is very minimalist yet layered, Scandinavian, a bit Japanese. Yeah, I, I've always been drawn to Scandinavian principles of design and sort of that minimalist, very neutral. I wanted to create a feeling in the space, mm -hmm. that combination of sort of soothing, relaxing, but also joyful. And it's sort of also what has dictated how I do my painting. So like this, little guy here, for instance, is I had to stop myself and really like let it just be in its sort of minimal, sort of soothing state. And it was actually a friend who told me like, it's, it's done. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Beth, 
thank you so much for having us in your home. It is beautiful. It is the Friends of Jenny headquarters. It is the family headquarters. It is. Don't really know each other. We only kind of know each other a little bit. So yeah. what better way to do it than get to know each other on camera? So I think it's best to start at the beginning. Yeah. Can you um, walk us through what it was like when you left McGill mm -hmm. for New York City and bring us up until present day? While I was in Montreal, I started interning for a small streetwear brand called Luscious Clothing. Uh, oh my gosh. Do you remember that? Oh my God. I had so many of those jeans. Weren't they amazing? Yes. I know. That is wild. Isn't that crazy? I didn't know they were Canadian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those raver pants. Yes. I used to have those raver pants. Exactly. I know. I still have a bunch of stuff in the basement like, that I got. Oh like the velour cat suits yes, and stuff like yes. that. Yeah. So I worked with her um, during my last year of McGill. And after that, it sort of sparked the interest and in, okay, fashion is an avenue I can go down. And interestingly, I was like, this is a different path. Nobody that I knew was into fashion. And it just felt like me going after something creative that was unique, which is so not the case now, but at that time, it felt that way. And so I applied to FIT to do their merchandising program, but it really was just a means to an end. Because I already had um, my degree from McGill, I could compress it into one year. And literally, like I stepped off the plane and went straight to the internship office and I got an internship at Michael Kors. I started working there like the month that I arrived in New York. Over the course of the year that I was in school, I was working and by like October, they offered me a full-time job. And that was an incredible like building blocks for my career. And when I was there, my boss was Derek Lamb. And he then subsequently left and started his own line. He eventually was like, would you consider coming and working here with me? Which I did. After that, I worked with Takoon. And after that, I got pregnant. Mm -hmm. So it was sort of that dilemma of where, what do we do? Both me and my husband are children. So we decided that we wanted to come back here. My eye keeps going to the jacket. I love it. So I'm going to try it on. You should. Go for it. <laughs> That was so much fun, thank you. The Carleen is coming with us. We're headed shopping, so I'll meet you at Souvenir Studio. So we're at Souvenir Studio, which is way more than an insanely beautiful boutique. It's a gallery space, a design firm, a styling service, and it's a must do if you're in Toronto shopping. So what I really like to do is find that sweet spot between mixing really simple modern pieces, sort of like that Scandi feel, but then making sure that we're mixing in some unusual textures. Um, I have this running undercurrent where I'm looking for things that have this sort of, I like to call it castle modern <laughs> feel. So sort of unexpected marble kind of looks, um, a lot of shine, some metal, uh, glass. So I think it's all about mixing those sort of imperfect organic shapes with some things that are a little sharper, um, just to create a lot of visual interest. Oh my God, that's fantastic. Guys, this is Danielle. She is the creative maestro behind this incredible place. So I'd love to start off with talking about business and being female founders. You wear many hats. Can, Beth, can you tell me like where was the spark of the idea for Friends of Jenny? Like I said, we, my friend and I from New York were really talking about what could we bring to the city? What could we bring to the Canadian market that wasn't already here? And we, we didn't really see this online specific boutique that carried these lesser known independent female designers. And we really saw a white space for it. And to have that space filled with not just a like standard online presence, but something a little bit more editorial and storytelling, which is, like I said, my favorite thing to do. We jumped right in. And Danielle, what was the very first kernel of the idea for Souvenir? So for me as a designer, I've sort of always been around the retail world. And I started uh, Souvenir with a friend of mine. We were doing pop-ups in the city for a couple of years. 
and with no real intention of opening anything serious or permanent. And it just sort of naturally snowballed into something that I realized that I wanted to do all the time, and not just sometimes. So you combined a lot of your loves. Can you um, tell me all the hats you wear? Because there's so many. Uh, there's a lot of hats. It's quite a stack. Uh, I have, I'm a designer. I own shop. I'm a creative director. And then I do art direction, styling, uh, creative direction, graphic design, product design, event planning, dinner hosting. <laughs> you name it, I've done it. I think for me, my love and my desire in life is just to be a creative person. So whatever that entails is something I love to try and I'm just really curious. So I always think, you know, what's the worst thing that can happen? I can just figure it out and, and try it. That was so beautiful. You both are extremely creative and you found each other, kind of like kindred spirits. You did. Beth, could you speak to someone who is also creative, maybe wanting to start a business and looking for that uh, creative community? I really think it's about like finding your people. And when you find them, go to them. I feel like we were like magnetically drawn to each other by our sort of creativity and our shared love of beauty. And I think when you find those people and those people who are willing to share, yes. right, that becomes so, so, so important. So I didn't want to bring up the pandemic, but Danielle, I imagine you had a decent go of it because people were just absolutely obsessed with styling their home, home decor, making a shelfie, taking photos. Can you walk me through a few design trends? Definitely. Uh, I notice a lot of clients that are looking for something that has that handmade feel, that sort of wabi-sabi, perfectly imperfect. I think that's been really something that people are desiring and especially when you're mixing it in with some more commercial pieces or pieces off the rack in a big box store. I think that's a way to really stretch your budget and sort of add something that's really, really personal that has an artist's touch to it. I think also too people are looking for larger scale pieces, more statement pieces, which I'm really excited about, you know, big vases. Uh, large bowls, which for a long time people were looking for more smaller pieces. So I'm really excited to see that uh, fewer pieces, but in more sort of statement sizes. Another popular sort of niche idea I found interesting is sort of functionless pieces. Pieces that serve no function at all. They're sculptural, they're beautiful, and they're unique. That's been something I'm personally really excited about uh, because I think we're veering away from function in a way and essential and we're craving beauty and uniqueness and uh, that special something that we can't quite touch on. I think that's something that my clients are really looking for. Beth, you ready to pick your top five items in the shop? No problem. Easy. Thank you friends so much for joining and I'd like to thank Beth from Friends of Jenny and also Danielle of the amazing Souvenir Studio for letting us shoot in her beautiful location. I'm Lauren Walker-Lee and this is Talking and Shopping.